if you do an, a thing that pisses that side of the world off, if you defend it and go, fuck you, no, that is how I think, mm -hmm. and they attack you, go fuck yourself. I don't care what you think, and they attack you, and you just ignore them, they eventually fall off and they go away. It's the unfortunate folks that say something, get attacked, and then they apologize, and then the mob attacks them more. Then they apologize more. Then the mob mm -hmm. attacks them more. And before they know it, they have to just go, okay, I'm sorry, I'm out. And they disappear and they get canceled. I am Josh Galindo. I've built several successful businesses utilizing the one tool everybody has, the mind. I am here to guide, coach, and prepare you. We will debate, discuss, and grow our minds together so you can obtain your own success. Fuck average, be legendary. This is my podcast. Honey, we are uh, blessed today with a beautiful, successful mother, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, model that was born in a town of a thousand people yes. and has made her way <laughs> all around the globe. Um, and uh, her name is Danny Reeves, and she is the editor-in-chief of Deluxe Version Magazine which is a globally published magazine. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited to get into uh, her story and her mm -hmm. journey. And so let's have some fun. Yeah. Hi, Danny. Hello. Hi. Josh and Crystal. Hi. How are <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. Of course. No, Thanks thank for being here. here. Yeah. Like I said earlier, this studio is amazing. Uh, oh, thank you. have a great thing going on in here. Did you, you you got to experience the whole office on the way up here? Uh, we didn't. We took the we took the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Stair come in tour. the side over here or from the very front? I believe the front. Okay. The front? Yeah. So we. Uh, so Glindo is because we just met. <laughs> like we just met like ten minutes ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. And you know what's funny? So we've got a lot to talk about. We this. do. <laughs> I've uh, so. Deluxe. Deluxe version magazine. Deluxe version magazine. You're going to laugh at this when I show you this. I'm at a house this morning because by my main profession is house flipping. So I'm at a house this morning and I'm meeting my landscaper so that I can place uh, the plants. So he'll go and buy a whole bunch of plants and then it's imperative that I put my last touch on it and place all the plants, right? And look at the hat he's wearing. <laughs> Shut up. That is so funny. No I like way. I had to take a picture with it. Oh my gosh. I don't I'm not sure I recognize him. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> I love to see that. Isn't I feel that beautiful? Like you know that what? That is the purpose well, you, of that. Thank, yeah. That is the purpose <laughs> of all of that branded wear that uh, our publisher Tim and I constantly wear. Some most of the time we're showing up in meetings. In our swag. In you know? Totally. Here. Yeah. 100%. Yep. I, Same here. Same here. I knew you would. That's I beyond going, that. oh my gosh, he's wearing one of our. Either, well, so yeah. you know, but it even that's even more better, special. though. Exactly. Yeah. It's one yeah. thing to have people you know supporting you wearing your brand. It's another I'm thing to so have someone you've never right met. That is so <laughs> funny. Thank you so <laughs> much for sharing that. That is so awesome. Just kidding. We quickly put this hat on. We threw some dust on it and said, here, Mauricio. I'm going to get I'm going to get you guys some some brand. Please. Yeah. And we'll 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 wear it. We'll rock it around the office. But isn't that awesome yeah people, that's so people funny people ask me if i like when i'm wearing that in the grocery store or wherever target people ask me because it is a bold it's kind of bold because if you don't know our magazine and somebody you're just watching walking around with deluxe version you're like hmm it's oh, bold of sure them. it's yeah. a statement yeah, it's almost a self-proclaimed statement if you don't yourself. know it's a magazine right understood right. so it does actually start conversations with with strangers and it allows me to you know, kind of give our little plug to them and tell them where they can find us. I'm a, uh, it sounds like we have a lot of very similar branding techniques because I'm that way. I'm a big believer about watches with that same approach. Um, a lot of these young entrepreneurs, which is a space that we kind of hang out in, mm -hmm. these guys will go buy a car for their first, when they make a few bucks, the first thing they do is go buy a car. I'm like, that's tough. I get it. That's tempting. That's a lot of fun. But it's not a conversation starter because the chances of you buying a car that's going to start a conversation is pretty slim. Yes. But with the same amount of money, you could go and buy a nice watch, mm -hmm. and then you have a conversation starter. And, and it usually draws the right type of people. Exactly. Right. Because it's pretty selective group of people who really know it's going to be 
it's mm-hmm. like that. So then it would be like that you're attracting that type of people. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't, then it didn't matter. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, it may exactly. not have been the type of person you wanted to attract. 100%. Yeah. Also, how many people see you in your car? If you're on the That's event. the other thing. <laughs> the car <laughs> driving like yeah. a classic and you're filling your tank yeah. out of the gas station. And then it's like some random person like me, like, what is that? Yeah. No, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but look, look at the back of my shirt. Yeah, yeah, those are nice. And normally I rock I like my them. my hat, but I've been mixing it up on and off, on and off with the podcast. Like, yeah, with the hat. I mean, everywhere. Yeah, same. You know, Galindo Group I Real know. Estate. I don't have to stress about my outfit. Yeah, no, no. I'm surprised I didn't best. come in that today. Actually, <laughs> I would have loved it. Together, <laughs> well, you look great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Danny, tell us, uh, summarize what we we kind of jumped into, probably dropping a lot of hints as to the obvious, mm-hmm. but uh, tell us about your role at Deluxe. Well, Virgin. tell us who you are and tell yeah. us about you. I want to hear all about you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm currently editor in chief of Deluxe Version Magazine. We are an international magazine, luxury magazine. We're based out here in Las Vegas. I joined Tim Hancock, who is our publisher and mastermind behind it all, nine years ago. He Remember in Vegas, I'm not sure how long you guys have been here, but... Born and raised. Yeah, our whole life. (laughs) Back in the day, Vegas would do all of these events that highlighted best bartender, best nightclub. It was really focused on businesses on the Strip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Tim saw a a space where he could highlight people like doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, real estate, uh, and and he started doing that. Well, at the time, I had a TV show on Amazon Prime, and he gave me an entrepreneur award. And when I showed up to the event, it was really nice. And he brought a crowd. Mm-hmm. He's very well connected in the city. Mm-hmm. He's great at networking. <coughs> and it was packed. There were about 200 people. Wow. He had videographers, red wow. carpet, interviewers. It was a, like <laughs> a, 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 a production. Yeah. And I knew... Just with my background anyway, which I'll kind of get into that, I knew I wanted to be a part of that. I just saw something there. Sure. So I pulled him aside, and I was like, whatever you are doing, I I want in. Because I uh, originally went to school for journalism, so I'm a writer as well. And I knew, I don't know, I just knew that I could be utilized. And we started, (laughs) our office was in his Range Rover for, like, (laughs) the first year, and that's kind of where we did our deals and everything. And now we've grown. We've... Print here in Las Vegas, LA, Scottsdale, Miami, New York City, Holy cow. Dubai, wow. Cabo. So, and and we just celebrated our ten year anniversary. That's fantastic. That's so cool. Bravo. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, that is so cool. Teddy, is there a button you could push over there that that does a round of applause? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's incredible. Yeah. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. What was he doing before that? He was a photographer and did some marketing as well for um, that really cool. I never remember the name, but it's that antique store uh, that Michael Jackson went to. Is it at the you know it's funny. Venetian? Is I, that I, I at? will never be able to tell you the name. We could say here forever. I won't be able to guess the name, but I can visualize the documentary or the commercial or the paparazzi scene where I watched him walking oh through that. St- and he, you know they play he it just in went the like window this, right? still. I and just buying saw everything. Yeah. He was like, I'll take that. I'll take that. Was it that scene? I I don't. I just was there with my daughter and I was like, she loves Michael Jackson. Yeah. So oh, he's I was like, the greatest. Oh, Michael Jackson used to shop here and in the windows because it's still there. The store is still there. I didn't know that. Um, in the window display, they have a TV and it's showing constantly. It's just rerunning episode it's probably a good move oh, for yeah. the store. but there's security you have to be like you, you know they it's they're really strict but anyway he did photography and marketing for that store okay at, at okay. a young age and just um like grew his talents through that and then so with the events everybody that was attending and all these uh people who were receiving these awards also started seeing something and we kind of built that into advertising giving them a space where they could showcase their business and that's how the tangible magazine started is is through that and then when you say tangible that means touchable paper, real yeah, life we yeah still print we still print even though we have a massive presence online through our website and social media and uh tim is actually the youngest luxury uh, publisher in the united states mm. oh and, wow uh we just utilized the social media platform and we 
I feel like that's kind of what we do different in, in the publication space. I see Vogue now doing that, but before even Vogue was doing any of their like reels or mm-hmm. Instagram, mm-hmm. we were before that. So. Yeah, I love it. They started okay. copying. The way yeah, I they was were, say you set the standard. They were copying. <laughs> yeah, man, that's pretty cool. And I love how how uh, how how well you speak of of Tim. Oh yeah, is it Tim? Tim, Tim Hancock. Okay, uh, he's family. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. My um, daughter calls him Uncle Tim. That's, oh, he's I love family. That. You know what? Uh, so I know him through social media. I've never met him personally, um, and he's always caught my attention because his outfits are so. Uh, OCD, I guess is maybe he's they're, a Virgo. That they, they are. They <laughs> I don't are. Know if you know, they, no. he's a Virgo. Is that, that the is characteristic? One hundred percent, like major quality. I love oh, it. Really, is okay. that they pay yeah. attention to detail. Yes, and that's it's why all I attention feel like to detail. Our magazine always looks so pristine. He uh, he obviously has like the final say on the edit and everything and how it goes to print. Mm-hmm. And he just has that natural eye in everything he does: business, design, photography. He doesn't forget about any detail i can see mm-hmm. i can see you can, you can always tell that with somebody and how they put themselves together where how far that translates into their life yeah. but yeah his uh his i mean you i will have to show you i just love his outfits you know i'll own it i love everything about how he dresses it's yeah. clean it's like <laughs> yeah, nice it's and clean. clean yeah clean put together yeah it's great he's i the thing about tim is that if you get close enough to him all he wants you to do is succeed he will go out of his way to make sure that you make the right connections and do whatever it takes for you he's on top of it like on you know you know when somebody is busy and but successful is when they respond immediately Mm. and like on top of it so if i need something he's usually putting us in a group text message with like a client that i need it's almost immediate and that's just another detail so um, it's incredible yeah We'll have to. You guys will have to meet. Yeah, we've yeah, we've, like, we've talked through the social, but just never do made it happen. Our top real estate agents, our top twenty real estate. I'm gonna have to be a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the past couple years, we did it at Jing, and I just went to Jing this week, and they they really want us to do it, and that's a great space. That's they a great love it's So much fun. It's so fun. They, it's so fun. Yes. Yeah, so. That place needed that badly. Downtown yeah. Summerlin. Yeah. yeah it's right? Jing yeah. is downtown yeah. Summerlin. Yeah. It's hip and it's trendy. It's it's the uh, Blue Martini of downtown Summerlin. A, a more uh, mature But a more version. mature. Well, Blue Martini in our... Jing would probably feel oh insulted gosh. the fact Blue that Martini. I just compared the two. I know, I know, but I know. 10 years ago, Blue Martini was that classy high-end, you know, I don't know, maybe it was more than 10 years it's ago. It's probably 39, 20 oh, it was more than 10 for sure. Was I there when... Is that? It's like 15... 15 years ago. Is are, when where I feel are like you from here? I'm originally from Iowa. Okay. How long have you been in Vegas? 15 years. Okay. So, so you, you. And when I first moved, that's where we would all go. Oh. Everybody was going to Blue Martini. <laughs> yeah. And Blush Nightclub, I think. Yeah. yeah. And Blush. Yeah. Yep. yep. But I think Jing, Jing is incredible. Yeah. They just have, and the food is so good. The yeah. chef is, they know what they're doing. So, uh, well, so we'll see you. We'll see you. Yes. I hope yeah, I'm there. I hope I get there. the invite. Tim, if you're listening, you need to invite Josh Galindo with Galindo Group Real Estate. It's already in the works. Good, good. So you, um, I heard you mention your daughter. Yes. Yes. This is probably more Crystal's department. I know. I'm like, I want to hear about that. How Fire old's your away. daughter? She's six. Six? Yes. Okay. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a seven-year-old daughter. Oh, so fun. right there. Yeah. Yeah. This is the stage where they have, like, the biggest personalities. Yeah. They're so yeah. funny. Yeah. Is she like exhausting? You're just like, is she just like stuck lie. to you? She's she's my twin. Yeah, I feel like I people that. S- say yeah. that. She's actually way bougier than I am. Really? She acts like what people think I actually act like. Oh. She's <laughs> like, I don't know. She walks around with like little Chanel perfume and yeah, her lip gloss. I know she's like extremely girly, which. Gosh, if she wasn't, I don't know what I would do. Cause I <laughs> <laughs> right, if you had like a tomboy, <laughs> yeah, support her obviously. Uh, yeah. Of course, I but always I have say that no too. No clue what to do. <laughs> and, uh, so is she in like any extra activities? Like, what is she? She into? well, so she's in kindergarten. She graduates on Friday. Oh, she, that's so. Exciting. How old did you say she was? Six. 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 So where's yeah. that? That's a little younger than Kinsley. A little older than Jagger. Yeah, because Kinsley's in first grade. Because she's it. seven, so she was probably five when she started kindergarten, turned six, and now she's graduating. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. She's played tennis this year. Um, she's going to be in swim lessons. It's funny. 
I actually went to school on a swimming scholarship, and I, I don't mm-hmm. think she thinks I can swim. But Mainly because I won't heat my pool. I refuse. Why are we heating our pool in Vegas? I feel yeah. like it's a million degrees. Why is my pool not warm? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't get in unless she will swim with me. But uh, she does not think that I can swim, so she refuses for me to teach. So swim lessons. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then when you finally show up and show her, she's gonna be shocked because I've se- I've <laughs> She'll met be like whatever I can do that. Yeah, no. I can do that. <laughs> the few people I've seen that have actually swam, I don't want I don't know maybe professionally or taking it seriously. Uh, it, there, it's an art. There's an art oh, to that. Like yeah. watching Anthony dive. Oh, yeah, our yeah, brother-in-law yeah. was oh, a swimmer. It's a technique. Yes, it it's yes. A, and you see it. It's you instant. You glide on the top. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's but, more uh, to you. You're also a swimmer too. <laughs> yeah. I love. I do love sports. So if I did have a tomboy, I would be fine. I'm a big yeah. Chiefs fan. Yeah. I'm sorry, Raiders. I, um, <laughs> I have but, no love for the. Ra- I mean, I don't mind. No, them. we like the Raiders because I we, like. We should. Yeah, I know. Because I want, we're from here. Right. What, what else? I feel are, that way too, but. I wish that it gave us somebody better than the Raiders. Well, like, <laughs> the Dad, Raiders. Close your ears. <laughs> yeah. No, the Raiders are, I don't know. They couldn't have made a team like the Knights. Like, I love the Knights. I don't know. Raiders are great. Anyways. <laughs> Anyway, you like the our, Chiefs. Yeah, the our Chiefs. son loves the Chiefs. Too. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. he's a big Mahomes fan. <laughs> yeah, we love it. I've been a Chiefs fan my entire life. We used to go to games when Joe Montana was the quarterback. I'm from that area. Okay. I'm, uh, Iowa, but um, an hour and a half away from Kansas City, Missouri, where Ryan plays. Okay. I so didn't know that. I've been a Chiefs fan this whole time, so <laughs> we were horrible for 30-some years, and it's been so exciting. To yeah. See. No, I mean, I you guys bet. have been crushing it. We have a, do you, have you ever heard of the little town called St. Joe, Missouri? Of course. <gasps> I tell my family, that's like an hour, so we're an hour north on the 15th, or um, the 29th, I-29. So I, I, I don't know it that well, but I'll tell you why I asked the yeah, question. That's such Is a it, random Right? right? Every yeah. time I bring it up and somebody knows it, I get personally excited, and then... <laughs> Then they ask me a bunch of questions. I'm like, wait, I don't know it that yeah, well. Yeah, he doesn't know it that well. But, <laughs> but we were we, we buy rental properties here in Vegas, and okay. then as they got more expensive, mm-hmm. they penciled less and less. You know, they the cash flow just wasn't as great. It didn't make as much sense to buy them. So we were like, we got to find another place where um, there's a great uh, rental market, and the house isn't very expensive. Like in St. Joe, you can pluck a cute little home, and it's a cute little home. Yeah, it's not a teardown. For I, the cheapest house I bought one time was thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five yeah. to like seventy five thousand, and the thirty five thousand dollar house, it just needed exterior paint, and the inside was beautifully done. It was already updated, and I think I rent that house for like eight hundred dollars a month. <laughs> anyway, that's how I landed in St. Joe. Um, we were looking for another market to invest in, mm-hmm. and uh, we've been out there twice now. I think like every yeah. ten to fifteen homes we buy, we go out and check on them. Check on and them. Uh, I think St. Joe's awesome. It's, it's like the cutest it's a little, cute town. little town. Like <laughs> I kind of really want to bring close. the kids. I think it'd be so fun. Oh yeah, yeah. they wouldn't that even know. So funny. It is. My whole childhood is basically my mom's sister used to. Her whole family is from there. Okay. And now they. What is St. Joe about? I mean, it's like, like a suburb of Kansas City, so it's okay. not, not really a suburb. It's still about like forty-five minutes away from Kansas City, but. I don't, you know, that whole, so if you go just a little bit further north, that's where I'm from. I'm from a town of a thousand people, nine, thousand. like 900 people. Oh wow. my goodness. You know, what we learned about St. Joe is that St. Joe was the Kansas city to some of these smaller towns around it. Oh, if that yeah. makes sense. No, there's a ton like of on Friday towns. night, they go to St. Joe to hang out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's where you go. Like where I'm from, we typically go to Omaha, Nebraska. So okay. Omaha okay. is like 45 minutes north of us or Kansas city, but that's like an hour and a half. But yeah, there's all these teeny tiny little towns on the river. So everybody's settled. Lewis and Clark down there. Mm. <laughs> That's the area where they did their exploring. So okay. all those little tiny towns on the river. And um, God, some of them were big and most of them were really tiny. Sure. Like it's mine. probably similar to like Boulder City, right? Mm-hmm. Like how like Boulder City is like right outside of Vegas. But then there's like little towns that probably go to Boulder City or like Laughlin. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Probably something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, do you do you love uh, considering your uh, physical presence? You're obviously beautiful, um, which my wife's beautiful. Here. I have to just say <laughs> that, just not to make it is. weird, she but you get my so point. Weird. I own it. Like I'm calling Tim. He's a stud. He dresses yeah. nice. I think you could see beauty anywhere, and if people aren't beautiful, you just don't say anything. If they are, why not let them know? <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> no, I always say, why not be uh, being honest is one thing, but being honest and rude 
is not. Some people are right. like, I'm honest, and they just think they got to tell everybody their opinion. No, I'm like, no, just because no, no, you're honest do doesn't mean you need to be hurtful. Yeah, no, right. Honest is great, like, ooh, I love your shoes. Mm -hmm. And you mention it. If you hate their shoes, just say nothing. Yeah. You know, okay. it doesn't, you don't have to be rude. Anyway, having said that, uh, with that physical presence that you have, and then being able to tap into, uh, I'm from Ohio, a thousand yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm an easy, normal. I'm you trying know. to tell everybody that I am so laid back <laughs> right. and I like I'll order a beer at dinner. Sure, that's what my point you know, is. Yeah. I play basketball and I was all in sports. It was coming from a town that small though, I am so glad that I actually was raised there because it was so tiny that the school almost it was required that you were involved in every single extracurricular activity mm -hmm. in order for them to have a team, a band, a choir. Almost everybody had to be involved. So I was able to do all these activities. And so it's really silly. Like I played the flute for 13 years, <laughs> like all these little things. So I feel like I am able to have conversations with sure. so many people about the most random things. Cause mm -hmm. I don't know, I was just exposed. But at a young age, I started modeling and uh, I competed for Miss Iowa Teen USA. Wow. And some of my teachers submitted me. It, such a small town and even though there's like omaha kansas city nobody's going to omaha or kansas city mm -hmm. you know so it's that's not even really a place on anybody's nobody know we're flyover state right <laughs> so <laughs> i my i had some incredible teachers my drama teacher uh helped submit me to miss iowa teen usa and from there i met uh the choreographer she had a big modeling agency she founded ashton kutcher carly oh, Foss. Wow. Anybody kind of in the Midwest, mm -hmm. she... Is that where Ashton was from? Where? Ashton was from the Midwest? Yeah, he was from Iowa City. <laughs> oh, wow. I had no yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, and he started as a model. She took him to New York, and he was on the runway, and he moved to Milan. And then start. he got uh, that casting with the 70s show. And that, and was, that was it. Small town kid. He got yeah. busted. How he was discovered... I love his story. She was... The agent was in the bar... And she saw Ashton, and she almost was giving up on being an agent. She's like, this is not making me any money. It's tough. It is. I would imagine. Oh, yeah. That whole space oh, is tough. I could never, ever, ever yeah. do it. I'll always say that. Um, but she saw Ashton, and she went over to him, and she's like, hey, how old are you? Because back then, age was a big factor mm -hmm. in, in the modeling world. And he wouldn't answer her. He kept ignoring, and he finally like turned to her and was like, lady, leave me alone. <laughs> And walked out of the bar. She followed him. <laughs> and he's like, I'm underage. And I'm not right. supposed to You're be You're asking here. me. What are you doing? And she's like, oh, my gosh. I just want you to, like, I feel like you could be a model. And yeah. that's ki that's how he was discovered. That's so, so funny. So like, when someone nominated you to do that, um, yeah, so was this of curious, was this a natural uh, desire of yours, curiosity of yours? Or did someone bring it to you and then you said, okay, I'll try that, and then found yourself liking it? No, I was always in theater and plays. I was always in the church plays, and I'm a performer at heart. I just love being on stage, and mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just something that comes real, nat really naturally to me, real natural to me. And when I went, there was 150 girls that <laughs> were competing. I was intimidated because pageant, imagine, yeah. pageant girls are on a different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They're on a different level. Mm -hmm. And the majority, regardless of what anybody wants to say, these girls are smart and they're involved in all these charities and just mm -hmm. they're very well driven. And it's sad that there is like this stigma, stigma behind it when yeah. it's just can, you can tell that nobody's ever actually met like a pageant girl before or had a conversation with them to think that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I made the top 20, but they thought that I was so tall. I'm like 6'4 <laughs> in heels, oh, and wow. I was a teen. So here I am, like this giant Scandinavian woman, like <laughs> standing. So they were like, well, we think you should do Miss, Miss Iowa next year. But excuse me, from there, our choreographer was like, no, you need to be a model. Come with me. And... Within like two weeks, I was on a flight to New York, and I had a bunch of go-sees. And then after what does go-sees mean? Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, what is that? Uh, 
so she's a mother agency, so she basically takes care of, like, when you're a baby model, right? And she introduces you to everybody that you would need to know, like Ford The model term go see is this person? So or what does I go sees go, mean? Go sees are go a see. model which... Oh, go I have see. a schedule, so okay. <laughs> like a day in the life is I had a schedule, and I had to be at Ford Model Management at 10 a.m., Elite at 12.30 and I just had a list of all these agencies, and because I wasn't signed yet, mm. I would just go and sit with a booking director, and we'd go over my portfolio. They'd take some Polaroids, and I was um, asked to be signed with Ford and Elite, and I signed with Ford, and then my whole career took mm. off. I've lived in almost every single major fashion capital of the world, and... Have, I don't know. It's just an incredible life coming from like a town of sure. Manhattan. My graduating class was twenty two people. <laughs> <Yeah. y'all. laughs> twenty two <laughs> people. That's so, insane. That's crazy. But I had that cre- I had that career while I was in high school. So it was interesting because when you're going to a small school like that, and then you've got something else going on, that's amazing that a lot of people don't have that opportunity. Not Not everybody people. wants to. Like see you win nice. sure yeah no one did you feel supportive. that a lot of people weren't kind oh, yeah. to you oh yeah my car was keyed mm. i had like girls just doing the worst the worst and i don't know it was i had a, a couple great teachers in my life that really stuck up for me my drama coach and then my basketball coach and my basketball coach said i couldn't leave at all otherwise you wouldn't have a team mm. <laughs> yeah. he was like, you can't leave this oh, school man. and try to go somewhere else but so rough industry. The modeling industry is yeah, nasty. I, is it nasty? Where do we even begin? Uh, yeah. You could summarize, unless you'd like to get into detail. No. Um, I, it's is it still changed. relevant today? What the pageant or modeling? Uh, the modeling space? Because like with Instagram and stuff, you can. I guess you know. I mean, uh, you could be a model through Instagram. You don't need to be a model through a, a Vogue or. There's um, there's different tears i would say maybe educate us for the folks that don't know sure i think i always believe that there's a space for everyone you know Mm -hmm. i feel like Mm -hmm. there is a space for the influencers um because they do a great job too and they make the brands a lot of money oh yeah and they make themselves money too so right there's a space for that and then when you're talking about fashion models you're talking about high-end designers that are still very relevant like your ysl Dior, Cavalli, like all of Versace, all of these brands still are going to have that look where it's yeah, y- you have to be a certain height. Usually, it's like five nine or above. They prefer five eleven, and you to be like a certain size. Yeah, um, what's the height about? Maintain. Any reason? Um, is there something to do with design the clothes, or is it uh, how you translate on the camera, or I, is it? <laughs> Why do these girls have to be so, so tall? Be, I mean, back in the day, this is not my standard. I just happened to be born tall, y'all. Like, I, it, would imagine, I can't imagine you controlled like totally it. Sure, <laughs> Different than I feel like my outside presence. So this is not my standard. This w- was put in place a long, long, long time ago, right? So they just had thought that a taller frame always makes the clothes appear to be nicer and more sellable. And usually on thinner, like a like a hanger, basically. Uh. Yeah. It's what I sometimes I would. See, to you, it's call funny. You're, you're bashful almost in, in describing it, but to me, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I get it. If if they're designers and they want their clothes to be portrayed that way, then yeah, you yeah, got to find the so right person to do that. And it's it is interesting. Like, if you see a runway show, the girls are all styled the same. The hair and makeup are always the same, and the girls typically have a very similar look everybody's the mm-hmm. same size everybody's the same mm-hmm. height yeah their facial feature models have a very distinct look they look for the same thing all the time like very high cheekbones really j- sharp jawline yep kind of yep. a pointy nose yep. like big forehead <coughs> any of you girls ashamed <laughs> of your forehead that is a fashion forehead we were trying <laughs> to tell everybody <laughs> that is a fashion well you said. know so i love it um those really sharp androgynistic features that almost kind of like come off like alien type and it's like 
I don't know. You're teaching us. Yeah. So that's usually what they look for in the industry. Okay. And your height and your measurements are extremely important, which I don't <laughs> always believe all the time. So <laughs> it's, it's a battle, but that's still... I'm going to say something controversial here in the modeling space. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to... You, for your own personal brand, you could agree or disagree or chime in or not. <laughs> so what we're, where I'm finding... So, you know, in the core days of this, of, of, the, of the world where there was a, a model that fit the mold you've just described, the reason that it was so special was because it was rare. Mm -hmm. There's not a million of those types of human beings walking around. It's not easy to, to, to look that way. It's not mm -hmm. easy to, to, to stay in the, and I hate to say shape, but uh, the sizing. Mm -hmm. None of it was easy and none of it was common. It was all rare. And therefore, it was special. And so now this new uh, generation of like applauding all humans, to me, I'm kind of, and, and I'll probably get slammed for this, yeah. but um, <laughs> so I'm okay, like, though. what's so special about being out of shape, not looking like every other human being? Like, isn't that what we're not, applauding here? Yeah. And that's what we're like, like when you're out in the wild, you're not like... You know, you see a, a, a unique, special animal, and you're like, that is fucking unique and special. Like, I have mm -hmm. to give it extra attention and pay extra attention to it and acknowledge its uniqueness and rareness and specialness. When you just are looking at a herd of animals, it's like, what's so special about that? Well, I would say... But I would society's say applauding all of it, and to me, I just don't think that that's... I don't think that's special. I think what you're trying to say is, like, a desired look, right? Like, that's a desired look. What... Sure, people probably strive right. to be it. Yeah, you know, but you know why? It's because it's rare right. and it's hard to obtain. Right, right. But to to not to to diminish that 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 headspace or that market, I think is kind of sad. It's like why aren't we celebrating this beautiful um, specimen, whether it's a male or a female, mm -hmm. if they've worked very hard to look that way or they were born very unique and could look that way yeah why not celebrate instead it's like almost shaming that and then celebrating the average man mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> what the fuck happened they outnumber the rarity probably of course so. yeah i mean i yeah um, i yeah it's really it's, it's, it's sad that it's dying <laughs> it's it, to me it seems yeah. like it's dying that that what you've described that beautiful model that i grew up looking at going um, but when you see it, and wow, when you see that gazelle walking around, there you, yes, go. you you recognize. I, d I know, yeah. I do. I acknowledge so it's it. still it is still there. But yeah, we live. The in society's space not applauding it anymore. I don't know, and they, they should. Yeah, obviously that is that is rare. Like I said, like I am this soul in this body that was given to me. So sometimes it is weird to even talk about like how I was born. Um, but it is really funny to see reactions from people when you're walking <laughs> around. This is what I, one of my best girlfriends, Trisha Thompson, <laughs> and I, oh, we were at Durango not that long ago, and we just had the funniest experience. This guy, we were walking together, and she's six foot four in heels as well, and she's fucking stunning. And uh, this gentleman was walking off the floor, and he had a cigarette, and he looked up and saw us and fumbled everything. <laughs> and he's like, whoa. So it is really – and we can't help but to bust out and laugh because it, we're just being yeah. ourselves walking around. Right, you, so you don't know any different. Yeah. But I will say, oh, my goodness, it, no matter where you go, no matter what, like – these girls out here are killing it. These <laughs> these girls are beautiful. In Vegas? I mean, everywhere. Oh, it, I, everywhere you turn, mm -hmm. the, these girls are beautiful. And I love, say what you want, gentlemen. <laughs> we do have a lot of opportunities to enhance our beauty. But girls play into that because we have fun with it. And um, so whether or not they are enhanced or natural, um, I don't know. They're, I feel like... Like you said, if they're beautiful, then we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge. But yeah, acknowledge them. The yeah. gazelles of the world—they are still very rare. They are still rare because you can be tall and just be a tall human, but it's kind of in the way you present yourself, the way you walk. And absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree. I I agree. It's kind of an uncomfortable. <laughs> That's okay. Well, because you're <laughs> the subject of the combo. Yeah, but, and I'm it's, such it, a girl's girl too. I want to hype my ladies up, and I want to. 
I want them to feel confident. That's always been such a, a like a goal of mine. I have another business called Mod- Models Access, and it's all about educating ladies and, and gentlemen who want to be in the modeling industry and how to d- go about it in a, in a smart way and kind of prepare them for what they're about to face. Mm. And um, so I am all about hyping everybody up and mm-hmm. w- making them feel special. I think it's I think it's important in a world that we are constantly like judging ourselves really to the extreme where we've never I don't think humans have ever gone that far and there's just so much more depression, mental illness, suicide and I just I don't know. I I feel like maybe they didn't hear something that day and you want to tell them like like your shoes they <laughs> might not be s- absolutely saying but oh right. my god your style is incredible so um, i'm the i'm the ultimate complimenter but I mean, sim city like sim, people are out there simping <laughs> hardcore we get it i see it and i'm like i don't get it but i totally understand both perspectives but what is simp city well simp like simping like right am i am i <laughs> and is it, am i showing my age guys out here that has like a br- i don't know exactly what they do but they have like Right, they have like a big group, and it's called Simp City, and I think it's the funniest name because, right, simping is like when you give somebody attention. Yeah, let's have fun yeah, with it. What, what is, is it? Simp? Is it, that like a new like acronym? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> really? Okay. I don't know like what that when means. When guys, okay, hit so on a girl, show a whistle might at not her. Be like you're like, what the heck is that all about? Like, sh- maybe she's not. Oh, I hate to like breaks my heart to say it, but maybe she's not as like. She shouldn't be hyped up as much as she should. Okay. Okay. And, got, and a lot of people give her attention. Right. Is this what simping means? Yeah. Like a, like a yeah. guy is being like called like a, like when you look at a guy and he's like the guy with a bag of stuff and he's just going around and just calling them names. Wait, is it? But okay. I thought it was with just about anybody though. Like anybody yeah. I'm sure online. I'm sure it could apply, but like that's they the have like simping way. season or something. Like is it summertime when all... <laughs> Well, I'm too old for this. <laughs> I know. That's what this, that's when I, I hear feel. a new term, I'm like, I'm like, am I getting old? Yeah, we but are. You know what you are? There's a group here in Vegas, and they have a play on that name. And I think it's okay. so freaking funny. I don't know exactly what they do, but... Um, I think we all have a definition of okay. it here. We don't. We actually don't know. So <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from the Gen Z, can they please? Thank yeah, you. Right? I was just going to say, can we Wait. get a millennial? But yeah. um, the funny thing is I qualify as a millennial. Yeah, but yeah, right. so I need to start saying Gen Z, someone younger. Our 10-year-old comes home and ta- tells us these terms. He's like, that's cap. I'm yeah. like, what? what have you heard mean? cap? I have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's cap, try to stump her. Um, Riz. Riz? I... Yeah, but wait, I know what that is because I had to Google it. Somebody, <laughs> it's charisma. Oh, what? Riz oh, means like, they, ooh, got, they, they got, got riz. the riz. Uh, oh, that's mid. Good. I kind of like that. I did yeah, too. I thought that one like was fitting. Mid. Yeah, mid, mid is, is a like good one. Not, mid, I thought was fitting too. Like, that's medium grade. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> well, you hear all these fire. Ones. There's what? There's one that's with an S, but I can't remember. I don't know. Sus, sus. Oh yeah, uh, like suspicious. that's suspicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'll stick with. I don't know if I'd use any of those. I'll let Beckham own them and use them. I, well, this morning I got dressed and Beckham's like, "Oh, I like your outfit." I go, "Is it fire?" And he's <laughs> like, I, "Yeah." I was oh, like, oh, that's "I feel cute. so old." <laughs> you know what I tell when he like brings home some new wild word and tells his mom, and he and he, I'm like, "Listen, Beckham. First of all, you sound like an idiot, <laughs> but that's okay." Because I was 10, and I walked yeah. around using words that made me Slang, sound like an yeah. idiot. And in time, you'll grow out of it. I get it. Yeah. Like, I'll be that candid and honest with yeah. them. But just don't use that with your mom. Like, like don't go like, hey, mom, me, that's Riz or bra. Or, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, bra. Talk to my oh mom my or talk to your mom like, <laughs> like she's your mom, dude. Yeah. You could talk to me like an idiot. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just don't talk to your mom that way. Or your grandma. Or, yeah. you know. Like, like don't that. call don't you me bra. I put grandma on game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> These grannies out here are, are <laughs> cool sometimes. We got pretty cool grandmas. My mom, your mom. Yeah. Um, so wh- I'm how curious. Much- I'm curious what brought you out here to to Las Vegas. Uh, so I actually eventually won Miss Iowa USA. So I ended up I was modeling and then came back and competed five times actually. Wow. For Miss Iowa USA. And when I said I was going to give up, I told my director because it's expensive to compete. Oh yeah, um, I have my aunt and uh, my cousin. They they're in a bunch of pageants. Like they live that pageant life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's it's a lot between the gowns and the swimsuit mm-hmm. and the up, you know, like, oh, yeah, up here. Sure. Yep. And then you have coaches. To Throw me a rough number. I think it'll be a shocking statement, so let's hear it. How much? Yeah, give me. Year? For, like, a pageant. Like, one pageant. What, what would that be? Easy fifteen to twenty grand. Wow, because to be able to get ready to compete, right? Because your gown is super expensive usually. Yeah, and beaded or unless you like get something passed down, but which is what I did for my team because okay. I had never competed before. But um, yeah, Turn I your fifth run for five times, and I told the directors I wasn't going to do it anymore. And <laughs> that year I ended up winning. You oh got my gosh, it. how funny! And it was incredible incredible but i i actually wanted to keep keep competing because i finally found a group of girls that i felt like i could relate to they were so driven they were so passionate they kept me on my toes because they were constantly doing something and they were you know i don't know they were really well educated and i wanted to always go back and see them so i would I started competing because I wanted to be around those ladies. Sure. I think that's really cool to hear because you would think that there's like so much competition that everybody's oh, willing to step so. on each other to there, like There get definitely up. is that, but but there's also people like you that want to lift each right, other up. <laughs> okay. Right. Because there's still girls that are doing it cuz it is fun. We obviously all want to win, mm-hmm. but there there's always going to be like really nice girls and then there's oh in life regardless of what industry you're in Mm -hmm. and then there's going to be the ones that are not so nice yeah (laughs) we still smile at them yeah really nice to them (laughs) (laughs) they love that (laughs) (laughs) and then they can't help but like you right right (laughs) no you're so right like what do you like what you they'd have to find something to not like you and they can't Mm -hmm. find it (laughs) i'm uh i'm i'm the guy version in my space of maybe what you're lightly describing, like someone that is easy to be hated on if you don't know who I am. And the first thing that I do when I meet people that only know me through word of mouth or social media or any other, anything other than an in-person interaction, I'm just incredibly kind to them. Mm-hmm. Let me just be, and then they're like, which is totally organic for me. If it was right. difficult for me, it would be maybe uh, it wouldn't come off real, but like, I'm just naturally a nice guy. I'm not going to lie. I was intimidated a little bit. I was like, oh, I don't know. He seems like maybe he would be. I don't know. I felt (laughs) like I was intimidated. And it takes a lot for me to be, you know, you have a strong presence and a unique look as well. Yeah. So that can come off as. I don't know, intimidating. Well, I'm so we're scared. both really saying the same thing here. Yeah. Is because you carry you that. You're gonna kill me on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. Well, oh my goodness. Goodness. <laughs> no, I think it's fascinating to hear about people. That's what this is really about. It's a, it's, it's. That's why we called it. It used to be called Fuck Average, Be Legendary. <laughs> that was a little harsh. So we, yeah, we killed harsh. the fuck average. <laughs> Although I still believe it. Yeah. But um, we just want to be be legendary podcast because we want to hear how people um are living legendary lives. You have to yeah. think is. If, if, if I'm sure you know this, but I'll reiterate it for the listeners. You're living a legendary life. You really are. The common folk is not living the way you're living, has not um, been in all of the fashion cities that you've just described, yeah. has not won uh, Mrs. Ohio. Iowa. Iowa, yes. excuse it's me. It's okay, we're all the same. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I told the you, flyover Iowa, state. I just Ohio. learned that term. Yeah. Illinois, Indiana, um, we're all the same. <laughs> you know, that's all legendary living. And to me, legendary living, me personally, is just about leaving a legacy. Is is right now I've left a little bit of me and my wife with you yeah. and you. And for the rest of your lives, if we never see each other again, I'll a little piece of us will live with you. Yeah. And to me, that's legacy. Yeah. And... Uh, um, that's why we want to talk to people that are living these special lives. Yeah, and the people that are living these special lives are the ones that are willing to take the risks. Absolutely. You know? And be on, on display and be yeah. criticized and be judged and be... You're right. Yeah, I learned that right away. I was like, because everybody yeah, had their opinion on me. It's challenging to be in this kind of space because you could be canceled at any moment. It's <laughs> That's why I think a lot of people maybe don't go on pa- podcasts because they're afraid of like maybe the truth or what they could possibly say. I think that the cancellation, the canceling thing for me is, is they cancel the week. Obviously, if you do something ridiculous cancel for the week, well, yeah. they cancel the week because when you get there's, there's obviously qualifiers just like anything in life. So not being extreme on one way or the other, if you do an, a thing that pisses that side of the world off, if you defend it and go, fuck you. No, that is how I think. Mm-hmm. And they attack you. 
go fuck yourself. I don't care what you think. And they attack you and you just ignore them. They eventually fall off and they go away. It's the unfortunate folks that say something, get attacked, and then they apologize. And then the mob attacks them more. Then they apologize more. Then the mob attacks them more. And before they know it, they have to just go, okay, I'm sorry, I'm out. And they disappear and they get canceled. I've, I've watched it with the bold personalities that go, fuck you, bring it on. And and defend their position. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the, the 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 chihuahuas that are looking to cancel somebody, the little yapping dog, <laughs> no, you're right. uh, you know, they eventually <laughs> shut up. They find the next victim to go and, and crush. So, to me, you know, being in this space, whatever I say is authentic, is real, is who I am. I love all human beings. Um, I love myself. I'm not uh, ashamed of it. I love my family. I think I've got uh, a killer family. Um, and so everything that I talk about, I'm proud of, and I would be happy to defend it if somebody questioned any of it. You know, it's funny. I listened to a quick podcast before I came up here, and I knew, I knew it, I knew it. I I listened to this one that he just takes clips of other public speakers and impactful moments in their speech, and I just scrolled and then closed my eyes and clicked on it. And it's nice. so funny that you say that because the whole entire podcast was about to own basically what you're saying and almost without being like brash but like um shoot i just lost my train of thought hold on it's gonna come to me again um take it time. Shoot. Don't feel i just because but owning owning act like you don't care almost sure. like act like not to be heartless or anything but if you do something and don't be so apologetic about it no. but act like you really don't care it, because it's the reaction that you give that, you know, is going to be the trickle effect right. in your life. So if something horrible happens to you, instead of like wallowing in the despair, your reaction actually is how you become successful to that. Like be in your emotions, be sad about it. Mm -hmm. Be, you know, if you did something wrong, like acknowledge your have accountability, have accountability. But to overcome that, your reaction is actually the most important. But I felt like that resonated so much because you are owning what you're saying. You're owning who you are mm -hmm. and not being apologetic about it. And but and, and, and not even... And not caring what other people are thinking about like, well, those decisions. Yeah, like and I'll saying. say you that I do care at some level, yeah. but I get the point. I do not care because I, I just don't allow their input mm -hmm. to dictate the next move that I make in my life. But I also think it's important to care. I'm kind of creating conversation here, not trying to contradict you, but I think it's oh, a no. good conversation to have. Mm -hmm. That yeah. caring what people think does matter, but changing my behavior because of your input, no. I that think, right. it, I think it's because it's all about intentions, right? So like what you're saying, whatever you're saying is not intentionally, you're not trying to hurt somebody. So you're Never. standing behind what you're saying Never. Mm -hmm. because you're not trying to hurt their feelings. That's not what it mm -mm. was about. There's not a thing I do uh, ever in my life. Right that I would try to hurt somebody right. unless they tried to hurt me. And even then I'd be like, eh, is it worth the energy to try to hurt mm. them back? Eh, oh, yeah, it's nah, too much that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they, can, they, can, they can waste their energy. Um, so Deluxe Magazine, okay, uh, your model is advertising, and uh, that's how you guys generate revenue? Yes. So uh, for people that are looking to get their businesses, their personal brands, their stories mm -hmm. um, in front of uh, an elite audience, a deluxe audience <laughs> you guys Got are it. the you guys are the place to do that yeah exactly so we really focus on telling stories that may never have been told or that may you might not think that you really want to like you would never see you know so right we have a lot of entrepreneurs i was saying real estate doctors lawyers business owners uh and they it's their space to to talk about what they're actually doing and I, it's great because it's self-marketing for them. We're, now it's all about that. So 100%. they have, to have, have that. Yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we give them a little bit of credibility behind that with our publication. So, And then we do all those awards still. We're really still focused on the events. It's a great networking opportunity for everybody that's our advertisers to come in and and have an event together and, and meet new people in the industry. And there's always new people coming in and out so it's you're always going to meet somebody fascinating and um because we're all over the nation we have a lot of people coming from different cities oh, to so join cool. us at those events so some of our celebrities will pop in and 
It's just a. It's so. Do you it's, love it? It sounds so it's fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's yeah. so much fun, and we have so many great people in our city too. So, we we focus. Uh, you can do a feature. You can run an ad. You can do both. We have cover options as well. How often does it get published? We're quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So your your article would be out for about three to four months, and we do different covers through the quarter as well. So. We distribute in Whole Foods, so say Crystal was on the cover for the first part of the quarter, and then you didn't pick that up, and then you had you on the second part. It would still be the same content, but people would gravitate. So it's different covers. People are still going to grab that. Um, but it's just different ways to to market yourself. Mm-hmm. Instagram, we have yeah. a studio that we go in and interview, so they have content for YouTube, their social media. Man. Yeah, that's a lot. That's really. I know. She's I mean, got a killer story. Time, I think I could be going on yeah. down the line, but have you looked into Crystal at all? Did you learn anything about her? I didn't. I'm so sorry. That's okay. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Sometimes I even challenge myself not to look at their social medias because then I get stuck on asking them all questions in that space. Like if I obsessed over your social, we probably would have never dived into half of the stuff we just right, talked about. Right, because then you're you're only talking about the stuff that's already out there. I right. want to talk about the stuff that's not. So I also did not look into you, so don't. Oh, okay. That's great. And then okay. some people um, <laughs> you do look into to try to find content. But I, when I saw your social, I was like, this girl will be easy to chat with. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um Anyway, she's she's got a hell of a story. So I'd uh, you'll have to just go and do some research on your own because I don't think we have enough time <laughs> no, to get into it. <laughs> no, um, oh, I would love to absolutely. <laughs> I have to brief it. I don't know if she'll I'm do it. I'm not really good about talking about myself. Though. It is hard. He it just did a great did, job for thirty you did minutes. A great <laughs> job. I feel like I'm stumbling over things because you don't want to come off a certain type of way. But you were saying like. I feel. I'm but let sure me tell you, you what's say, sad. Let me what tell you what's a great sad. Life is is <laughs> what's sad is what you just said is that as a male, I can sit here and tell you that I'm a I've, I'm revolutionizing the residential real estate market. I own 87 resident uh, rental properties. I have a whole bunch of supercars. I got a hot wife. I've got four <laughs> kids. I'm in good shape. I feel like I'm an attractive looking guy. My point is is that I can get into all this self consumed stuff. And the, the world will be like, mm, yeah. They'll, they'll applaud now, you Now, if a it. female does that, she's a bitch. Yeah, she's full of herself. I and I think really that's like so sad because I was raised by a single mom, mm. and I watched her have to navigate that whole world, yeah. especially in a different era than today. But it's kind of sad that a female can't talk about um, their successes and, uh, and, and not be considered full of themselves or, or, or a bitch. Yeah. Um, and I use that word on purpose. You it's know, just but it's sad. At, it's they should be able to pump themselves just as much as a guy can. Yeah, I would say it's looked at more negatively than positively. You're right. No, but that's said. not us here. We <laughs> applaud all successes. <laughs> Anybody living a legendary life. Um, well, thank you for thinking that I do. I, I really honestly feel that. And it kind of goes into good. sometimes it's hard to talk about that because I know a lot of people are struggling. And even though I've worked for where I've been, it, d- it takes a lot to get out of a teeny tiny town in Iowa and and be friendly and like have mm-hmm. this personality to make connections but it's hard to say oh my god I've lived this legendary life when you know people are like maybe not in the same position as you I'll but own I'm, absolutely none of that I think you I think you I think you earned every bit of it thank <laughs> yes. god and I always would before we leave I always want to shout out my parents because if it really wasn't for them, honestly, I have the freaking most amazing parents. Oh, I if love it that. was not for them, that's why I strive to be like such a great mom. If it was not for my parents, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. Still to this day, they're so supportive. They, they set that's you fantastic. up. I love that. I yes. love that. Uh, shout out to mom and dad. <laughs> shout out to you for for putting yourself in a position to be sitting and living the life, sitting here and living the life you're living. Yeah. Nobody gave it to you. Nobody gave right. me anything. Mm-hmm. You're not. Someone can give a lot of people things, and they can choose to fuck it up, right? Or they can choose to make it better. But getting given anything doesn't give you an instant free no. ride. No. So I think we've all earned what we're living. Um, I think that'll wrap it yeah. up, honey. Do you yeah. want to <laughs> go into anything else? No, I thought that was good. All right, Danny. Before we let you go, I want to make sure that the whole world <laughs> can find you. And your amazing magazine. So give us a little bit of a plug of where they can find you, what social medias, Mm -hmm. if not all of them, I'm sure is the case, and a little bit about your magazine, and then we'll wrap up. Go. Uh, You can find me on Instagram at I am Danny Reeves, 
And then uh, Deluxe Version Magazine. You can find Deluxe Version Magazine on IG or our website, deluxeversionmagazine.com. And Beautifully said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Thanks, Danny. Yay, thank you, Danny. Thank you guys so much. Hey, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you guys want to learn more about the tools, tips, and tricks that I use on a daily basis to maintain my success, stay connected with me through all of my socials at I am Josh Galindo.